Grace and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. I have to ask, has anybody here ever been skydiving? Anybody? Well, nobody was, has been skydiving in the Saturday service either. I guess we got a lot of people who don't like a lot of adrenaline. Well, I don't know about all of you, it's on my bucket list. I want to go skydiving at some point in my life. The idea of it just, it gets my heart racing. I think about how exciting it'd be to just fall and see the world so small underneath you and feel like you're flying for just a second. But I also can't imagine what it's like to take that first step out the door hmm. in the safety of a cockpit flying high over the earth and then stepping out into nothing into the unknown. I can't imagine the fear and the anxiety that comes with that. Everybody I've talked to said it's a blast to skydive, but boy, it's killer to take that first step out. You know, I've come to learn something, and that's there's a big difference between learning and, and dreaming about something and actually doing it. It's a lot of fun to learn and dream about skydiving, but doing it is a whole nother ball game. When I was younger, I dreamed about having a motorcycle. I always wanted to have one. Finally, when I was in college, I got one. And boy, oh boy, that first step over the bike. I'd be a liar if I said I wasn't a little anxious, a little worried, a little scared to start it up for the first time and ride down the road. I mean, even this, even being a pastor, it's something that I dreamed of for years, learned about how to do for years, and then the day finally came when a group of people got together and said, that guy's going to Peace Lutheran in a town named Anago, Wisconsin. And all of a sudden, the dreaming and the learning all shifts to reality. No longer is it just reading books. It's actually serving. It's actually sharing the gospel. It's actually doing. And the heart starts to race. The anxiety starts to set in just a little bit. Because you step out of safety and known and you step into uncertainty and fear and anxiety. Well, unfortunately, I think discipleship falls into the same category. It can be exciting to talk about discipleship. It can be exciting to talk about sharing the gospel, changing the world so that everybody shouts the praises of Jesus. But there's a big difference between dreaming and doing. I don't know about all of you, but I did, and still do, dream about sharing the gospel. I do dream about the whole world shouting Jesus' praise. I think that would be a great world. Having people yearning to hear about the gospel, hear about what has been done for them, talk about a successful ministry. That is the dream but what happens when those conversations actually take place? We can dream about being invited into homes or, or sharing our faith with people on the streets. But what happens when somebody finally says, what do you believe again? What, what's that whole Christianity thing? Then the fear starts to set in. The anxiety and the worry. Maybe not for all of you. Maybe some of you are like, nah, that's easy. I'm still happy to do it. But I know for me, I still get a little worried, a little fearful, a little anxious. Because when those questions get asked, all of a sudden, I start asking questions like, what if I get it wrong, or, or what if I stumble over my words, or, or what if I say something that, that didn't make any sense, or what if I stumble over my words and I fall flat on my face, and all of a sudden, they don't want to hear anything about this Christianity thing. The whole thing is too big for me. There's too many unknowns. I don't know if I can take that first step and share anything about my faith. It's easier to stay inside. It's easier to stay in the comfortable. I think I'd rather just go home, shut the door, know my Lord and Savior myself, and not have to worry about anything else. And this dilemma isn't a new one. God's children have always been a little fearful and anxious about sharing his message because he know, or we know the world isn't always apt to hear what Jesus has to say. But, dilemma or not, the call of the Christian isn't to lock ourselves away behind closed doors. It's to go share and to love and to be disciples. 
Well, let's join our fellow fearful folk in our gospel reading and walk alongside them and hear what it is Jesus has to say about going and being a disciple. So in our reading today from John, we hear about uh, 11 of Jesus' disciples, and it actually says that they have locked the doors, plural. And scholars, I, I wanted to share this because I thought it was funny, they're so fearful, scholars think that doors means they locked all the outer gates, and then they locked the house doors as well. They were so afraid, they were making sure nobody was getting through one or two or three doors to get to them. They were petrified. They were so afraid of the world around them. But remember, remember what's going on right now. I mean, sure, we got to to shout praises of Easter that he has risen, but these disciples, they don't know that yet. These disciples think their Lord and Savior is dead. He is gone. He's been crucified for his message. It's no wonder they're afraid. We're talking matters of life and death. Jesus' name was not something you would have wanted to utter in a time like this. If you ask me, the fear seems pretty justified. Sure, stay inside, be safe. Their fear is justified, even if they did, in fact, get to walk alongside Jesus all this time, hear about his ministry and his mission and everything that he had come to do. It's still easy to be stricken with fear when you are talking life and death outside that door. So if we stop here, if we simply stop here, it seems like defeat, doesn't it? We just sit with the disciples in the locked room, we fear, we huddle, maybe we share our faith among one one another, but that's it. And if these are the disciples of Christ got to walk alongside him and couldn't take that step out that door, what hope do we have? I don't know about all of you, but I didn't get to walk alongside Jesus and see him face to face and hear his ministry. I have this good book with me, but I didn't get all the things these disciples got, and and yet they're still so fearful they can't take that first step. So what hope do we have? How can we be expected to go? Well, the answer is found in the very person who wasn't there in that room mere seconds ago and simply appears. It's Jesus. Jesus just shows up. It doesn't say he magically opened the doors. It doesn't say he climbed in a window or dropped in through some sort of vent. No, it says he appeared in the room amidst his frightened and terrified disciples. Now, before we talk about what it is that Jesus has to say, We need to hear one other thing. We're talking about taking the first step as disciples, aren't we? How we step out of our homes, out of safety and the known, and we share the good news. Well, our hope is found in that very same Jesus who appears in the room, who took the first step. Dear friends, it can be intimidating to share the gospel with the entire world because we fear about getting it wrong and failing or maybe even being persecuted. But that first step is one that we can, in fact, take because Jesus took the first step for you and me. I mean, really, I I want you to envision this. Jesus is the Son of God. Before he was born, he was in heaven in, in glory and eternity with his heavenly Father in perfection. That Jesus came into the womb of Mary to take on flesh and humility. He took the first step. Not only did he take the first step, he didn't even get to say, well, I don't know, maybe it's going to go great. Maybe I'm going to get born and the entire world's going to say, yep, that's God, we want to listen to him. Jesus took the first step knowing full well that not only is he taking on humanity and humility, but that first step is a walk directly to the cross for you and for me. His first step was the first step to death and resurrection for us. If anybody had the right to be afraid, If anybody had the right to say, no, I'm going to stay behind the locked doors in safety, it is Jesus. Because he didn't owe this world anything. He's perfect, we're sinful, but he came nonetheless because we are sinful and we did need him. We needed to know who the loving God was that created all things and wanted us back. He came for the sinful and the hopeless. He came for you and me. He took 
the first step. All right, so we're back in the room. We're back with our fearful brothers and sisters in Christ in this room of many locked doors, unable to take that first step. Jesus has just appeared to us. He is alive. Victory has been won. But I'm still scared. I don't know about all of you, but I'm still not sure I can take that first step out the door and share this gospel proclamation. Well, Jesus, before he even gives them the great task that we're going to hear about in a second, says this, peace be with you. In fact, he says that twice before he sends them. Peace be with you. Peace has come in the form of our Lord and Savior. Not only does that mean as Christians that we should have peace in our heart, because yes, we should. We come here and we hear about victory and how how Jesus has defeated death, sin, and the devil, but we also live in a sinful and broken world, so I know fear and anxiety, it fights with that heart of peace. Jesus is saying, peace be with you. Have a heart of peace, but not only is he saying, peace be with you in your heart, he's saying, I am going to be with you. Christ is the Prince of Peace. The Prince of Peace has come to you. He goes with you. Fellow believers, no matter what it is that you face in this world, you face it with a heart of peace and a king who is the Prince of Peace. There's no place that you can go in this world where he has not already gone. There's no distance that you can go that he is not willing to walk alongside you. That Savior goes with us. You and I, and alongside all those disciples who were afraid in that room that very night. All right. Take a deep breath. Maybe we have some peace. Maybe we can, in fact, be disciples, but but what am I supposed to do? What does this look like? What do you want me to do in my life? Well, after saying, peace be with you, Jesus says, just as the Father has sent me, I send you. God sent Jesus into the world with a mission. Now Jesus, on that mission, defeated death, sin, and the devil, just as we said. Something we could never do. He took that first step, and now he tells the disciple, disciples and us, it's our turn. Just as the Father has sent me, I am sending you. I want that to sink in for just a second. The ministry, the message, the peace, the gospel of Christ, all of those things are now ours. Just as the Father has sent me, I am sending you. That means no matter where you are in life, no matter whatever that first step looks like, you not only face it alongside Christ, but we face it out of necessity because Christ has sent us. Dear friends, Christ came into this world because it needed him. And now we go forth, are called to go forth into the world because it still needs him. You and I, we need Christ. Our neighbor, it, they need Christ All corners of the world need to know who the Lord and Savior is. It is Jesus, the King who has defeated death. I know I don't need to tell you this, but the world is a hard place, isn't it? The world can be a tough and broken place. It has sin, and that sin can be isolating. It can make people feel alone. And I tell you what, people have struggles and challenges. I know you all have your own struggles and challenges. Our neighbors in the world has struggles and challenges. But it is for those people that Christ came and it is for those people that we go and share Christ. We have been loved so deeply. We have been given everything. And now it's our call to go and do the same, not for the sake of getting anything, but just for the sake of loving our neighbors so that Christ might be enter into their lives, that the Holy Spirit might work. Now, i got to say this as an aside, because it's something we're going to mention a lot over the next six weeks in this discipleship series. 
taking that first step into this world. This mission that Jesus has sent us on. It's not about immediately changing hearts and minds. If you go out of here today and you think that your call is to immediately get the person you see on the street in pieces, pews, and membership rolls next week, it is going to be overwhelming. That is not the first step of the disciple. Our first step is simply to love. Love expecting nothing else. And that means getting people in the pew. Love them for them. Love your neighbor for just being your neighbor. Love them. Hear the stories. The first step out of our locked doors is simply and beautifully loving. Expecting nothing on the, uh, for ourselves. It's simply going out to talk to people. To hear their stories. And I promise you, you're going to hear some incredible stories and some heartbreaking stories. And all those stories are ones that the Holy Spirit can work in. If you go out and you think you alone need to change the world, I'm sorry, but you're going to fail. But if you go out in love and you know that the Holy Spirit can work in you and does work in you, then maybe the gospel is going to reach more and more people. But first and foremost, we got to love. Jesus was sent on a mission. That is now our mission. Let us go forth and love, period. And I already gave you a little bit of a hint, but the last thing Jesus does for his disciples and for us as we stand in the room is give us something very important. Not only has he given us peace and victory, not only has he given us his mission, but now we stand here on the precipice, ready to take our first step, ready to go out and love our neighbor and ask ourselves, why am I different? How am I going to do anything? And as Jesus says that he sends us on the mission that he has been sent on, it says that he breathes the Spirit out upon them. It's the very same Holy Spirit that we receive in the waters of baptism. It is the Holy Spirit that retains our heart of faith and points us to the cross and a God who loves us so deeply. Once again, if you think you have to go out and change the world and get the entire world into pieces, pews, and ministry, and get their hearts to come to Christ, we're going to fall short. But if we understand the Holy Spirit works, if we understand that the Holy Spirit can, in fact, do everything, then our call is a joyous one. Our call isn't to change hearts and minds. Once again, our call is to love so that through that love, the Holy Spirit can work fellow redeemed children, we have the Holy Spirit. We have the living God working in and through us. And if you're sitting there thinking to yourself, well, I can't do that. I'm just so-and-so in peace and a go. Don't for one second let yourself think it was an accident that you are here, where you are, who you are, when you are. God made you with a plan and a purpose. He put you where you are, when you are, as you are, so you could go out and serve and love He's got a plan for you. It is to share the gospel. It is for you to go out and love your neighbor as you have been loved. God's plan for you is first and foremost to love him. Get that right. Get that first. Love God first. And then after that is figured out, go and love your neighbor. Over the next six weeks, we will hear about what it is to take that first step. But I'll give you just a little bit of a, a peek and a conclusion to this message. The first step and every step along the way of being Christ's disciple is love. Plain and simple. That's the step we are called to take to love. As you go out this week, I'd invite you to remember that you have been so deeply and beautifully and utterly loved that God would send his son into this world that you might be redeemed and sanctified in myself also and be called children of God. Take that love. Let it wash over you every single day. And then take that step out your door and share it. Dear friends, hear the stories of your neighbors. Love the loveless. Share with everyone and rejoice on the journey that we have all been invited upon, sharing a love that has come to save. 
Let us pray. Dear God, we give you thanks that you sent your son into this world, that he took the first step, the most difficult step for us, a broken and sinful world, a step that would receive victory in the end and resurrection. Lord, you bestow that victory upon us. Help us to go forth and share it with the entire world, shouting your praises and loving our neighbor, that in those actions the Holy Spirit might work, reaching them and pointing them to you. All this we ask in your beloved Son's name. Amen.